Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion, coming to you live from Paris. Well, today we are gonna do a vlog on the connection between two of, some say, the greatest thinkers of their time, Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So we're strolling down the Champs-Élysées and we're making our way to the first stop today, which is the Four Seasons Hotel, but it used to be called the Hotel George V. This was one of Jim Morrison's favorite places to stay. At different times in both Jim and Oscar Wilde's life, they both would come and stay in Paris for extended amounts of time to kind of think, to reflect, to work on art, and just feel accepted. Yes, Space Invader was here. So now it's a Four Seasons, like I mentioned. It's pretty expensive to stay here. But shortly before the doors did LA Woman, Jim Morrison came here and stayed with his friend before they went skipping around Europe exploring. And then once they recorded LA Woman, once he finished his part, he told Ray Manzarek, I'm taking off to Paris. I already sent Pamela there to secure us a place. This is where she secured them the place. It was called the Hotel George V. And he told her he wanted to, he wanted to stay there because it reminded him of a plush red whorehouse. So, which Ray Manzarek even said, he said, I thought it was weird that Jim left because Jim never left during sessions. Like he always wanted to see the project through. And when we did LA Woman, he finished his parts and then he said, I'm taking off to Paris. Pamela's already got our place. So they came here. Well, he came and joined her here, but they only stayed for one week before moving to where Jim Morrison would officially be pronounced dead. That's a pretty cool window display. Check that out. Holy cow, somebody just came up to me and recognized me from my videos. <laughs> In Paris, who knew? Oh, Oscar would have loved that. That's right up his alley. And you too. Now this is the view that Oscar Wilde would have had outside of his window at this next hotel. Now this hotel had a very, very special place in Oscar Wilde's heart. The Hotel Voltaire. This is where his mother brought him the very first time when he came on his very first trip to Paris. This is where they stayed. And pretty much every time after that, while he had any kind of means to, he would stay here. He would stay here for extended amounts of time. He would come to Paris and stay for three months at a time and always stayed here. And you can tell right up here, they've memorialized that on this plaque. Now this section of Paris was probably Oscar's favorite, the Riva Gouch. This is where, like we just saw, this is where he stayed the very first time and many times when he came to visit Paris. But this is also the area in which he died. As you can see right here, the reason that Oscar loved this area is because this was known as the Antiques and Art Gallery District. So right here at the Hotel Mussolier Opera, is where Oscar Wilde came at the very end, well, almost the very end, when he lost hope on love, life, and pretty much had lost all inspiration for creating any kind of art anymore. He moved here. He was broke. He basically lived off of the free bread and butter and coffee that they served off for breakfast. And then he would roam the streets and hope to run into people that recognized him, that they could buy him a cognac or something to get through his day. He was asked to leave for not paying his bill. Um, he was sent repeated notices and unfortunately be at this time that he would contact Robbie Ross and tell him, Robbie, I'm dying beyond my means. So, he moved out of here and went into, a, at the time it was kind of a scummy place, which is where he ended up dying.
Well, God love them, they do have a little bit of a memorial of Oscar here inside the lobby. And the room's booked, so I couldn't go check it out, but you can see here where it mentions this was where he came for the end. Take a look at this. And if you ask me, this is my favorite section of Paris. Now we're headed to the last place that Oscar Wilde and Bozy had an encounter. Bozy was Oscar's lover and his father accused Oscar of being a sodomite. Oscar took him to court was pretty much losing and the court turned it around on Oscar and charged him with indecency to which he would be sentenced to two years hard labor in jail. When he came out, he did reconnect with Bozy, but it just never really ever worked out. And by the time they met up here where we're going, Bozy's father had passed away and left Bozy most of his fortune. Now it was here at Shakespeare and Company that Bozy and Oscar Wilde had their last meeting. Once Bozy had all that money, Oscar asked him to spare an allowance, to give Oscar an allowance since he had lost everything because of Bozy. To which Bozy, who now was financially independent, could have helped Oscar with no problem, said to him, don't be a whore, Oscar. And to my knowledge, they never saw each other again. He gave him nothing. We're gonna cross the river right here. Well, we're in the neighborhood, so you know Jim was walking past this while he lived here. Oh, see the Rolling Stones tongue up there? So here it is. This is where Pam and Jim moved into after they left the Hotel George V. A model friend of theirs named Zozo had an apartment here. Well, she had a flat here and she wasn't gonna be here. So she rented it out to them. They moved in in May and you know, this was the last official place that Jim actually lived. Now they, uh, they were staying here for pretty much that entire time except for one week where uh, Zozo came back with her friends and asked them to stay somewhere else. So they took off and stayed at the last hotel and in the room that Oscar Wilde passed away in. Now while he lived here, there was a park nearby that he used to love to frequent and he did some of his writing there. So we're gonna head over there now. So there's our next stop, Place de Vosges. And I believe it's straight through here. Now it's here in this park. <laughs> they say it hasn't changed hardly at all since the days Jim would have been living here. This park was less than a five minute walk away from his flat. And they say he used to come here and sit on the park benches and spend countless hours watching people, drinking coffee, and writing poetry. Now they say some of the more memorable things that he worked on here was some of the selections from Wilderness and the American Night. It's hard to know where Jim would have sat specifically, but there are many benches around here. And it very well could have been this one or this one at any given time, or this one. <laughs> Are you feeling the gym spirit yet? Now since Jim lived right through that alleyway that we came through, more than likely this is the entrance. The same one that we walked in is the exact one he would have walked in most every time. 
at least up until July 3rd. Could have been any one of these benches. And we have another Space Invader, Invader Washir sighting right up there above the sign. Now this amazing statue is actually located in front of our next stop, which was Les Du Magots, which was one of Jim's favorite restaurants. And whenever the doors would come back to visit Jim's grave, they would always eat here. And so I think we should at least have some coffee, right? For Jim's sake and Ray Man's Eric's sake. And this church is what they would have been looking at, looking out the windows. Same view they would have all had. Well, it's not dinner here. I'm just not hungry, so I went for coffee. Now our next stop is our very first connection between Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison. Now during the time that Jim and Pam were staying at that apartment they were renting from the model, she actually came back into town with some friends and wanted to stay there herself and asked them to find somewhere else to stay for a while. So they moved here onto the second floor into the Oscar Wilde room, the room that Oscar Wilde passed away in. This is the famous room that he would be quoted as telling Robbie Ross, I'm having a duel to the death with the wallpaper. One or the other, him or I have to go. And unfortunately it was Oscar. Now at the time this was kind of, they called it a pretty rundown place. It was called the Hotel Alsace. But now it's a pretty plush place and they charge 850 euros to stay in the room. And I assume that this must be the room right here because they said it was on the second floor. And that's the room that Oscar passed away in. Unfortunately at the age of 46 for meningitis. His debts here were paid off. Robbie Ross acquired the rights back to Oscar's writing and um, used that money to pay off Oscar's debts. And as you can see here, there's a plaque here commemorating Oscar Wilde's passing on November 30th, 1900. In my opinion, the greatest writer that I've ever read. Now here in the lobby, they actually have two pieces of writing from Oscar. Um, and these are both have, have his name. This is when he was known as Sebastian Melmoth, but he did sign them Oscar Wilde. And I just love the fact that Jim Morrison himself was such a big fan of Oscar Wilde that this is where he would choose to stay. It's almost fitting that this would be the second to last place he would live. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm almost wondering if this isn't the first floor and this window right up here that's open with the bit of a chandelier if that wasn't Oscar's room. I'm hoping at some point to uh, stay there and vlog the room. Here's where Oscar passed away and Jim Morrison stayed for a week. This would have been the second to last place that he stayed in here in Paris. All right, let's head off to our next stop. Now I'm gonna take you over to a bar that used to be known as the Whiskey A Go-Go. And before that, when Jim used to go, it was called the Rock and Roll Circus. Well, the blue doors you see before you used to be the entryway to what was called the Whiskey A Go-Go at one point. And like I said, when Jim used to come here on a frequent basis, it was known as the Rock and Roll Circus. Now, uh, there's a lot of speculation to this because if you saw the Doors movie, you saw that Pamela says that Jim was, uh, was found dead in the bathtub. But the owner of the Rock and Roll Circus said that is not the case. He said Jim died here in a bathroom stall. He said Jim came in, ordered a bottle of vodka, and uh, took it to the bathroom 
to buy heroin. And while he was in there, they believed that he shot up and uh, passed away in one of the bathroom stalls. Now his friends went in there and found him, freaked out, um, grabbed him and took him home to the apartment that he and Pamela were sharing and put him in the bathtub. Now, they say that the reason that Pamela uh, may have said that that wasn't the case or why she said that she found Jim dead in the bathtub is because she didn't want to be investigated for heroin possession, which makes a lot of sense to me. And even the man who owned this club at the time wrote a book and said when he heard on the news that Jim Morrison had died in his apartment, he shouted out loud. He said, no, he didn't. He died in my club. I saw it. I know he did. So seems like a very, um, I mean, to me, it seems like it makes sense. So this, I believe, is the true death scene of Jim Morrison in the bathroom here. Now I believe it's like rental offices or whatnot. I was trying to uh, show you through that people. All you can see is really like a, a walkway that leads to stairs, but... Yeah, they believe this is where Jim Morrison actually really died. And not to be too morbid, but it is kind of just one of those weird feelings looking at this and thinking of almost in your mind seeing his friends carrying him out of here, walking him to a car, and he was already gone. Now we're passing by the Notre Dame. We're gonna be headed to that side of the river. Well, we have returned and the door actually just flung open. But this was the, uh, this was what they considered, or at least what Pamela said, was the last place that Jim was alive. Or at least she said they went out to dinner, came back, he took a bath and died in the bathtub. But as the story that I believe and what I've been telling is that he died at the Rock and Roll Circus and his friends brought him back to here, which probably makes a little bit more sense to me. And, uh, man. This is where his official last residence was. Now I'm not absolutely positive as to which flat it was, but it's just kind of amazing to think of. This is where they came and took him away for good. And uh, sadly there was never an autopsy. We're almost there. Both Jim and Oscar came to Paris as a place of security. When Oscar was being charged, Paris was one of the only places that defended him in the media. They would say it was an absolute travesty to treat an artist such as him with the contempt that they were treating him with that trial. So Paris was Jim Morrison and Oscar Wilde's last home. Unfortunately, in the end, for both of these great minds, they both ended up in pauper's graves. And both are now interred here at Pierre Lachey. Now we came to both of these graves about a year ago at this time, but I wanted to come again. They deserve it. first stop it's gonna be James Douglas Morrison Jim Morrison well here's the final resting place of Jim Morrison the funeral was described as disgraceful when he passed away they called the doors manager and told him and as Ray Manzarek said we didn't believe it because Almost every other day, there was a report that Jim had passed away. He said, I remember being at a party and somebody ran in crying saying, Jim had just died in a car wreck. And then 10 minutes later, Jim walked in. So when they called and said that Jim had died, we sent our manager to go investigate to make sure that he was actually dead. And when he called, he said, 
Jim's been buried. And Ray said, did you see the body? And he said, no, they had it sealed up. I didn't get to see it. And he said, was there an autopsy? And he said, no, there wasn't. So Ray never really believed, honestly, that Jim would pass. He even said, we just conducted business as usual after Jim had passed or, or after they said he had passed and he'd been buried. We kept rehearsing for months, just waiting for him to show up again. Now it was described that Pamela bought the cheapest coffin that you could buy. It was a little under 800 francs for the entire ceremony and it was just a veneer coffin. They said there was no priest, there was no prayers, there was nothing. It was just, he was lowered into the ground and the ceremony lasted less than 10 minutes. They said it was just a dirt pile here originally and a few days later somebody came and left shells commemorating that that was where Jim was buried. And then a few days after that, the shells were stolen. So they said a few months after that, the cemetery itself put up a black shield, like a uh, headstone marker, and they even spelled his name wrong. It was, uh, they spelled his name the French way with two S's and one R. It said Morrison James Douglas. And he said that was stolen. And then a year later they replaced it with a concrete one that was also stolen. So for about seven years, Jim Morrison's grave had nothing commemorating it really until a Yugoslavian um, sculptor created that bust that used to be here that's also now stolen. And he, um, he had that put here because they knew that the, uh, the doors were coming for a visit. I think it was the um, 10 year celebration or the 10 year memorial of his death. So now the bust has been stolen and this is all that remains. And um, they often wondered why Pamela didn't spend more on his um, funeral or anything, but she was the sole beneficiary of his estate. So she got everything and then ended up overdosing herself three years later and dying. So here, here he is. I said, pretty sad guy so beloved had really no ceremony at all, no remembrance. Now they have uh, they have people that come out here all the time and they have hidden cameras around here. So they pretty much warn everybody not to stay in here after dark because they have uh, guard dogs that come around and they have um, security cameras. And if they see anything, they say they're watching this 24 hours a day. So, so there's actually like a light pole around here that has a hidden camera in it. And up until Ray Marins Eric died, he said he was never 100% sure that Jim was actually dead. He, he kind of believed that he faked his own death and said, we always just expected him at some point to pop in and go, here I am. Now, since there's no access to this, I often wonder when I see pictures from here, how people are leaving photos and flowers and everything here. Now, like I said, this is part of the connection of Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison, where Jim stayed, the second to last place he stayed before he died was actually in the Oscar Wilde room where Oscar died. But Jim is not the most popular person to be visited here. It's actually Oscar. So let's go see Oscar now. Now, Oscar was buried in a pauper's grave as well when he died in 1900, but not here originally. Originally, he was buried outside the city limits of Paris and was eventually moved here in 1909 when Robbie Ross had acquired Oscar's works back, paid off his debt, and moved him here. Well, here's Oscar. So in 1909, he was removed from where he was originally buried and brought here. Now this massive monument that is here for him was actually consigned for 2,000 pounds by a man named, well, Robbie Ross did it, but it was created by a man named Epstein. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to take Oscar's love of mythology and some of the things that Oscar would write and incorporate it into this. Now, originally there wasn't a headdress there in the original designs. It was a, uh, it was an angel above the ear. And, um, and he went through multiple different ideas of how to do this. Now, here's what's crazy, is that when it was done, it originally <laughs> had testicles. And when they, um, this was made in London, and when they went to transport it, the customs was gonna charge them um, as though it was like 
they didn't care that it was a monument. They charged them almost as much as it cost to have this um, created. So when it came here, the, uh, the people that were in charge of the cemetery thought it was disgraceful that it had testicles, so they covered it with plaster. And, um, and so when they did the unveiling, the artist wouldn't even come. Now the unveiling was actually, believe it or not, done by When he saw that they covered the testicles, he brought a phallus and attached it to it <laughs> and they removed that of course and then it was covered with like a bronze butterfly he actually removed the butterfly and took it to the artist to show him that it was no longer there now if you're wondering what happened to the testicles they've never been found but the rumor was that's been circulated for a long time was that they said the caretaker here at Pierre Lachey cut the testicles off and used them as a paperweight for his desk I kid you not so now it's the most visited grave here because of all the like lipstick prints and everything and the like they said like the the fat from the um the kisses was deteriorating the monument so they covered most of it here in glass now but it's actually thanks to robbie ross now last time i was here i kept lamenting that i i knew robbie ross was buried in the cemetery but i couldn't figure out where and then people started writing me and said he's here when he died he had his ashes put in here with oscar so robbie ross who is responsible for Oscar's legacy is uh, is buried in here with Oscar. And there's a I forget what city it is in in England that there's a uh, there's a museum that actually has the original drawings and designs for the what was originally going to be this monument. Look, I I can't even tell you. This is probably I don't know 15 feet tall maybe. In my opinion, the greatest author of all time. And right up here they reference his uh, writing of Salome and that's where a lot of the inspiration for this tomb came from. And you can tell right where the glass ends, people are still coming up here and kissing it. A lot of people didn't like this monument when it went up. They thought that it should have been something more like the Happy Prince or something like that. And originally the design at first was like two boys dropping their head in sorrow. But in the end he decided that it should be this, I believe it's Osiris, with uh, the headdress up here. And each thing on the headdress represents a different characteristic of Oscar. And Oscar, I'm going to leave you a few coins for the afterlife. Get some cognac. Goodbye, Oscar. You finally got the dignity you deserved. Well, Lionhearts, that's going to do it for us here in Paris. Tomorrow I depart. Hope you guys have enjoyed this series of videos, and I thought no better way to end it than to pay tribute to Jim Morrison and Oscar Wilde. Rest in peace, both of you. Great minds of our generations. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.